Hey guys, welcome back to the Vulcan Deck Masters Season 1 Playoffs. It's time for the quarterfinal between Trump and Toyota. The winner of this advances to the semifinal, and then they play Surrender for a spot against Cypher. Cypher is from Fate to Karma, and his teammate Toyota is playing in this series. And uh, joining us, we have a special guest, Brian Kibler's uh, companion, animal <laughs> companion, it's Shiro. Yeah. I, you know, thought I'd find a, a co-caster for us for this game. That's right. Uh, you know, we we are uh, we are doing commentary on uh, my value town teammate Trump uh, against Toyota, who, as you said, is a teammate of Cipher, who's already moved on to the finals. That's right. You know, I work best in tricast anyway, so uh, you know it's good that Shiro can fill in some of those uh, awkward gaps of silence. He so mostly does analysis. You know, he's, he's oh, not, that's right, that's uh, right. Post game analysis. Yeah, post-game. exactly. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to see what he'll think between it's a he, right? I think looking oh, forward yeah, to what he'll sure say. There's a heat. Uh, between, uh, between the games. If you guys are also wondering about how you can fill in the empty gaps of your website needs, you can go to squarespace.com slash deckmasters and uh, take, care, take a look at all the professionally designed websites that you can have. You don't need to be super proficient in any languages or you know coding and whatnot. All you have to do is go to that website, get some tutorials and things to get <clears throat> a basic website set up, and you can get 10% off if you go to the link. Again, squarespace.com slash deckmasters. Uh, while we get a chance to wait for Trump versus Toyota. In the meantime, I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying the match. We have uh, Trump versus Toyota coming up here. It's Warlock, Warrior, and Hunter up against Warlock, Hunter, and Mage. We saw Toyota earlier, but this is the first time we'll be seeing Trump today. Uh, and he is going to be bringing pretty normal lineup. In fact, I think these three classes are the top three for Conquest. If you were to generically summarize them, uh, would you agree with that or not? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Warrior, Warlock, and Hunter, uh, at least two of them are in most lineups that we that we tend to see. Uh, they're all just very solid classes that can play uh, really mm -hmm. powerful, proactive game plans and don't necessarily have tons of vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, Warrior with the option of playing either Patron or uh, Control Warrior has a lot of great matchups across the board. Similarly, uh, Warlock has both Zoo and uh, Handlock, as well as even Malagos, Combo Lock, as, uh, as options. So not only are they strong classes, but they have a lot of different builds that can sometimes throw your opponents off and give you a bit of an edge. Oh yeah, absolutely. And in this can case specifically, I have to imagine that Trump will try to mix it up just a little bit. Um, he is very aware that people are watching his stream very often to study his play styles and his deck tendencies. And with that, he tries to surprise them. So he might be playing a lot of handlock on stream, and then he'll whip out the aggressive zoo. Or he might be playing a lot of like you know, aggressive zoo, but then whip out the demon lock type stuff. So I wouldn't peg Trump on only playing Patron Warrior or only playing Handlock or these type of decks. He's a guy that can certainly surprise us if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. And uh, looks like I believe Trump is playing Hunter here on the bottom of the screen. Uh, and then Toyota. I think he's also. I think we are starting with the Hunter Mirror match here. So, uh, you know. Obviously, a uh, uh, a matchup that can very easily be decided by early tempo, as we saw in the last match, where uh, Surrender's Face Hunter deck was able to get the best of Strife Crow's uh, more mid range deck. It looks like Trump is playing the the hybrid Hunter style of deck. Uh, we saw you know we, we saw uh, a Sludge Belcher in his hand that he mulliganed away, but he starts the game with a Leprechaun. Those are not cards you typically find uh, in the same deck most of the time. Yeah, you're, you're correct. Um, you know, it allows him to be really aggressive in this scenario, too. Toyota finds the Haunted Creeper, though. That's huge, considering every single minion or thing that creates a minion is one health or less, at least currently in the hand. And then Trump picks up the Abusive Sergeant. So he's going to have to just go for damage. Now, just because he did get the Haunted Creeper, though, doesn't mean he's guaranteed to win the game at all. It just means it helps him stabilize on the board. Because ultimately, you can't truly stop the Chargers without taunts. And even then, they have ways to get past it. The face hunter is very tricky with some of the damage. It just creeps up on you, and then you can't really stop it. Yeah, the uh, the fact that that even if you are able to to somehow stabilize the board, you do still have to deal with both the charge minions and just the hero power. Uh, it's a big part of the reason that that hunter is so strong uh, is that it's able to uh, really close out games very effectively with the amount of damage it has. It can just go directly to your face. Yep, absolutely. Wolf Rider demands a response here, but there are a couple of 1-1s, followed by Pilot Shredder, 
unleash the hounds and Savannah High Main. So Trump's curve is figured out for the most part. And Toyota has to figure out ways to stabilize, which he can. He has his own Unleash the Hounds and maybe even Freezing Trap if he wants to really interact with like the Lepronome that way. But there's so many charges that it might feel too risky to do that. I'm a little surprised to see Trump play the Wolf Rider there. Uh, Toyota can just clear his board if he wants with just the one ones that he has in play. It also does open him up to Unleash the Hounds just potentially taking out his board. Um, though Trump does have his own Unleash to, to you know come back from that. Uh, Trump had the option to possibly unleash and then uh, clear the uh, Toyota's entire board and potentially just bounce his uh, his unleash with the freezing trap that would that would quite likely come out of the mad scientist, uh, which does leave him with nothing in play, but would leave him with a a wolf rider still in his hand as well as the uh, as well as the pilot shutter to follow up next turn. So I. Uh, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of actual decision making. We were talking about this last turn, or, or last game rather, that, you know, while people say that, that, oh, face hunter or hunter is, you know, such an easy deck to play, there actually is a lot of nuance to it and a lot of opportunities to make different decisions. Not, not too much in this turn specifically. With Trump, well, yeah, he's, he's this got turn the Shredder. Easy. This turn is I have four, I play Pilot and Shredder. I have Shredder A or I have Shredder B. Now, I know some people even throw in some psychology like, well, you always want to play off the top of your deck so you can make your opponent believe that you didn't have it. And I'm like, well, you know, it just doesn't really matter. You can, you can argue both ways. Unless you're willing to enlighten me, Kibler, in terms of playing cards from the left or the right. There, I don't feel like there's any relevance. I, I, I mean, I have to admit that I barely pay attention to where my opponent's cards are. So I know, I know <laughs> there are people who follow their opponent's hands like a hawk, you know, or it's like, okay, right. this is what he drew this turn and this, but... Uh, but this is actually going to be a really good turn for Trump because he's able to actually yes. use his Unleash uh, to break the Freezing Trap and likely clear both his opponent's hounds uh, and then just go to the face. Yeah, I, I think he might want to consider the possibility of another trap, but I think this is definitely the play. Unleash the Hounds is so effective at disarming that Freezing Trap. He attacks the face so that Ooh, way he yeah. wouldn't get hit by a Freezing Trap, but that could have been bad if it was explosive. Oof. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by that. It's okay. The mayor fears no one. Yeah, I mean one of the one Not of the big things, one of the big things <laughs> uh, here for for Trump is that he does have that hound still in his hand. So the the freezing trap that's going to come out of this uh, this mad scientist isn't really scary for him. An excellent point as well. Oh, yeah. I'm actually I mean, a little bit su surprised. I'm actually a little bit surprised that, that Trump chose to go face with his dogs rather than clear uh, Toyota's dogs, because now Toyota's actually able to kill that piloted shredder, which otherwise, uh, thanks to the hound in hand, could possibly get get uh, more damage in. And I'm also surprised to see this play where Toyota, knowing that Trump has a bounced dog, just plays Freezing Trap into it. Uh, yeah, I mean, his alternative was just to hit the face with it, right? But... I think what he's doing is forcing his opponent to commit three mana to bounce it back and then making his play awkward without being yeah, able to fill out true. the spells. Mm -hmm. It does it does prevent Trump from playing Savannah High Main on turn six, which is clearly what you know you, you would love to do here. Um, but at the same time though, he, he can play Hound, bounce that back, hit face for four hero power. Uh, he puts Toyota down to five, which means that just quick shot pl plus hero power next turn is lethal. I wonder. Yes. So I mean, okay, this but, playing high main is also okay too, because then he I, has to kill it. But. I'm I'm a little confused by this play. I I I think that you could put your opponent to guaranteed, basically guaranteed lethal next turn. I I think both ways is is still okay because you still oh, have the dog come out you're, and you're still, still in a, you're still in a good position here for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, here here Toyota has you know some oh. options now. <clears throat> yes, actually, you're you're right. If um, especially if something like wonk really wonky comes out of that pilot shredder and ends up backfiring. Mm -hmm. No, you're totally right. Like this, this gives a small window for Toya to maybe come back. It's still yeah, yeah. very slight. I mean, I, I don't know how Trump would have how, how Toya could possibly win this game uh, if if uh, Trump had taken the other line of play. 
Yeah, let's see. If he goes for put him at five health, the only way Toyota could have won is if he drew heal, right? Right. Because there's nothing that can block a quick shot from directing your face. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, the, I, I have to imagine that Toyota has forgotten about this hound because, you know, he 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 already played a freezing trap into it, and now he's just he's just going face rather than attacking into one of these guys. And he's he's just put himself dead on board. Well, I, I think he he realizes I, that. I wonder. I wonder. Blake anyways. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if Trump is. I'm 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 very confused by what's happening. Okay. I well, guess I guess maybe he's afraid of explosive here. I mean, he's he's gonna win anyway. He's gonna go ahead and, and abusive here, go to the face, quick shot, and the game's over. Okay. Yeah, I think his his question was like, what's the best way to play around secrets in case it's a weird mix up because it is Toyota and he could bring something very unique to the table that you're not sure about. Um, so I guess in in that capacity, it's just fine. Uh, to do it the way it is. So, uh, overall, I think uh, there was just no way for Toyota to come back, anyways. And Trump takes a quick 1 0 lead. I, I mean, Shiro actually really disapproves of the Hound not being played. That was mostly what he wanted to see was the Hound be the decisive card played that game. Um, so he's a little disappointed. Okay. Yeah. I, I would it's have kind of to. Bias toward Hounds too. being unleashed and such. Being yeah. a hound himself. Sure. I think sure. technically he's actually a toy dog. So maybe he's rooting for Toy Da. But uh, but I'm okay. for I can so see maybe, the wordplay. Maybe, uh, maybe we're on different sides of this, Pierre Shiro. Yes, but he is the master, so you know, you have to you have to beckon to his call, right? It's true. True. <clears throat> it's true. I mean, you're the you're the one giving him food in, in the house and warm, he's got so the crown. You tell me look the look at this. Him. There's the there's the, the you know Shiro's got the crown on. The... Yeah, <laughs> he is his his Facebook profile, which he has, by the way. You can request Shiro Warren on Facebook. Uh, it, it actually says dictator at trading cuteness for food. That's actually his role. Shall be mine. That, that's good too. I, I have something similar, except he doesn't trade cuteness; he trades salt. But uh, <laughs> same exact thing. Too. So here we go into game number two. Trump playing the warlock class, and it seems to be leaning towards that zoo. Uh, he's been playing a lot of handlock on stream, so it makes sense that he can mix it up. But yeah, you know, at the same time, regardless of what you can peg on it warlock is such a versatile class now um pretty much anything can be coming out of it you have to be on your toes at all times although when you see your opponent coin knife juggler i think you have a pretty good idea what it is it is uh it is definitely a, a play that gives away what you're doing and i i wouldn't expect to see anything oh actually maybe we could see a void walker here uh potentially save the coin for a future turn no nope, we're gonna see coin juggler yeah it feels like the least amount of responses possible from your opponent, and if he plays Mad Scientist or something else, you have options with Voidwalker um, to block things, right? So that way, Knife Shucker is better. So you get the damage in now as opposed to later. Mm -hmm. And as the Warlock player, I think you really have to take the sh super strong initiative against Hunter because Hunter will be so good at rebounding against the board and being able to freeze out with so much more value that. Um, you really need to try and take initiative as fast as possible. So I like Wayne Knife Juggler here. And right now, I mean, Toyota only really has a Haunted Creeper to play into it. He could Freezing Trap, which is pretty reactive and uh, somewhat weak. So, I mean, Trump can even just play a second Knife Juggler into that mm -hmm. and, and not even attack if he doesn't want yeah, to. Yeah, just hold. Right. Which, and having the double Knife Juggler up with the possibility of playing even multiple minions in future turns is really scary. <laughs> Yeah, I think Haunted Creeper is just more effective considering that he has Animal Companion to follow it up. It might give him an opportunity to kill. Assuming that's even the case, though, like if Trump chooses to eliminate this off the board with Iron Beak Owl, yep. then that puts him back to square one, and then he has to just fight back from board the, the more honest way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Twitter right here is really looking to possibly pick up a uh, uh, an Unleash the Hounds, which, as I said, Shiro would really appreciate Yes, <laughs> um, but not in this case. He's got another way to to bring out some animal companions here. Uh, trying to see if he can stabilize, and if he gets Huffer, he's just gonna have Huffer's, to trade it. Yeah, Huffer's the worst. That's the best. Mm -hmm. Getting Misha here is actually great for him because now Trump's in a spot where he can, you know, he can play juggler. I mean, he can play juggler into Voidwalker, which can potentially even if he gets a, a good juggle here, can actually let him trade. The owl. Oh, is man. Now, That's this is so a, big. This is an 
awesome spot for Trump because yeah, like, he has such a huge board. Even on Unleash the Hounds at this point, would only trade with Voidwalker. <laughs> That's right. He needs to unleash the hounds with Hunter's Mark, and even then, needs a little bit extra juice. Yeah, Toyota is really far behind now, uh, and he doesn't even have a great play this turn. You know, he could play potentially Mad Scientist into Freezing Trap, um, but that that Houndmaster is looking pretty sad with no uh, no buddies around to uh, to pump up. And I mean, here, you know, we can even we can even just see that uh, that Voidwalker come in and. You know, break the freezing trap. We could even. I, I wonder if. I wonder if it's actually best for Trump to actually play abusive sergeant and then imp gang boss. Look into actually breaking, uh, killing the, the mad scientist with. Yeah, if we actually see this, kill the mad scientist with juggles, then he'll prevent his opponent from actually getting a second, freezing trap. Yes, you want to kill the mad scientist so that way, if he has only one kind of trap in his deck. Then you he unfortunately did not, which kind of puts him in an awkward spot because now he can't he can't uh, play the he can't attack with the Voidwalker without leaving his guys exposed to possibly dying. But here right. he just bounces the juggler instead and hits for six with Voidwalker still protecting his entire team. Yeah, which might even be okay because um, then he can oh, replay some other cards. Or... Okay, there we, there we go. Oh, oh, and now unleash. Is it too late though? It's still okay, but yeah, it might just be too late with, especially with the the, the double juggler and the imp gang boss in play. Mm -hmm. Like he can kill he can kill the the one juggler. Oh, no, actually, this is still pretty good. He can kill the jugglers and kill the two one. There's imp gang boss, uh, and now yeah, no, that's, that's actually quite good because uh, Trump doesn't have any small minions to really attack into the board here. Uh, he could attack with the imp gang boss, get it bounced, and just replay it. Or potentially play like Juggler and Flame Imp this turn. I kind of like Juggler and Flame Imp rather than playing Imp Gang Boss because you establish the value of Juggler and get six power in play versus two. Is it too much to Doom Guard to try to get damage in? It's a second freezing trap. Uh, Doom Guard can't get isolated, has to be Hunter's marked. His opponent's going to try to play High Main. You get five damage in now. Yeah, I, th I think you'd rather get the, you know, the. Uh, six power to the board versus five power right now, and okay. it's also just just higher value because you don't you don't risk discarding uh, the two one drops and then sure. having very little to do next turn. You'd rather get rid of the imp gang boss who's just not very good at five cost. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's Mad Scientist again. Toyota not really drawing very well. He already used all of his secrets in his deck outside of a snake trap, so that's his Ooh. only. It was the only thing is actually kind of attractive. We've already seen an unleash. There's no traps left that you know of. You could just doom guard. Now you can't. Doom well, guard. <laughs> well, yeah, doom guard <clears throat> again allows him to pressure, but uh, he does toss some valuable cards away. Considering his opponent already used unleash the hounds, like you mentioned, and. You already saw two freezing traps, so this might be a way for you to fight back and pressure the board again in, in case um, it is snake trap, and it is. I see you. Although, interestingly enough, this like uh, because it's like he's he might be afraid of explosive trap, he might just go for the trades instead, and then that ends up being like a snake trap activator. Yeah, I mean, he has he has had the opportunity to watch Toyota's games. Uh, in the previous rounds, which is one of the big advantages of being a high seed here. Uh, you know, you, you are able to get information about the contents of your opponent's decks by watching either live or watching the VODs. And, uh, and here, you know, he knows that he hasn't seen an explosive trap from, uh, from Toyota in the previous games. So he's just able to, you know, go face, now load up the board. Now he has lethal already in play, plus a power overwhelming and doom guard in his hand. Yeah, something just has to stick, and most likely something will. I, and there's no way for him to race. Uh, the Houndmaster only stops three damage. There's I mean, just no way. Even if uh, Toyota had an Unleash the Hounds here, he has a board that is really resilient with the Imp Gang boss, the, uh, the Haunted Creeper, and any one of those surviving with Power Overwhelming plus Doom Guard next turn would end up ending the game. Yeah, it would have to be something miraculous. Unleash the Hounds. Well, you know, the Unleash the Hounds, the um, 
it, you would still be able to kill off the Imp King boss without creating a minion because of the, the way the board got filled, but even That's, then, the Flame Imp would probably survive. So. Or just even one of the spiders from, uh, from the, uh, right. the Creeper. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Any one of them is going to end the game. And here, there are... There's no Unleash, and Trump is going to very easily clear this and, uh, and end the game. Absolutely. So... Uh, he can choose to do it in a variety of ways. <clears throat> um, he's going to also see that this is uh, Snake Trap too. So he gets confirmation that it is what he thought it was, even though he already attacked Face and Noom. I don't and think there's any other trap it could have been after you know, he, had, he had attacked Face and played Minions. So I don't think there was any other... You know, it couldn't be Snipe, it couldn't be Misdirection. True, true. Yeah. That's also a good point. And Maybe he just forgot that. So two games to zero, uh, Trump winning with his Warlock deck, leaving him, I believe, with just Warrior left? Yes, I think uh, Warrior is the only thing uh, remaining here for Trump, and it might be leaning towards the Patron Warrior. It could be Control. Either way, I still like his chances here, considering Toyota. Um, he's got some decks that might be good against Patron Warrior, but still... Uh, he's he's had some, needs his, some luck in order to finish out that series against Forsen, right? He was down 0-2 uh, once again, and maybe he's able to come back this time. And if he's able to, then he gets one step closer to joining his teammate in the finals. Uh, yeah, so you know Trump is definitely in a very good position here. He just needs to win one game out of three uh, uh, against all of Twitter's decks. So, uh, and, and Trump, he is a player who's played a lot of Warrior, a lot of different kinds of Warrior, too. So... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a lot of experience with both patron and control. Not clear what he'll have brought at this point, but uh, my guess is likely patron, given uh, what he has tended to favor recently, and that is exactly what it is. Toyota has the acidic swamp who's immediately in the hand, though, and I have to imagine he's going to keep that as it seems like he's opening up handlock. And if he can defeat the patron, um, he can definitely start climbing back uh, one game at a time. I think Hanlock is his best chance, especially if he has ooze in there. Disrupting the Death Spite is really key to make sure that the Patron Warrior doesn't get combos off or draw a lot of cards to Battle Rage um, or even remove your minions very effectively too. I mean, Death Spite, don't forget, does five damage, kills Emperor Thorson pretty easily. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is definitely, you know, the, the Acidic Swamp Ooze can potentially come up really big here and there are, uh, you know, obviously the choice for weapon removal. You can choose to play Acidic Swamp Ooze or Harrison. Uh, most players tend to favor Harrison Jones in decks other than Warlock, but in Warlock, you already have access to Life Tap. So the card draw element of Harrison Jones is, is less important than just the efficiency uh, of Acidic Swamp Ooze. The fact that you can Swamp Ooze uh, to kill a Death Spite or even a, uh, a War Axe if you really want to uh, definitely helps. Uh, you know, deal with the the, the issues that uh, whenever they do arise. So, Trump just or uh, Toyota just opening with life tap while Trump plays a armor smith and then life tapping once more. Yeah, the goal is to just get as close as you can to the Twilight Drake. I feel like Toy is playing so fast that uh, you know, spectator spectator mode is getting a little bit of a, a headache here, but it looks like it's <laughs> it's stabilized for the most part. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now. Trump does not currently have a execute, so he is uh, not really able to deal with this right away. He does pick up an inner rage from the inventor, but his hand is is pretty good, but doesn't have any way to deal with big minions. And uh, Toyota has a lot of big minions. He has that second Twilight Drake ready to come down, uh, and this could this could end up going pretty poorly for Trump. Yeah, the fact that there's more than one threat to follow up is hard to deal with um normally if there's one threat you can piece together things slam and you know death spite allows you to remove it and all of a sudden you're not as confident as you are dropping thorson before if you can deal with threats preemptively in this case it's a little difficult you can slam um death spite and trade into one drake but what does that open up for the next turn because one drake will be hitting you right back the entire time yeah you're, you're not really in a great spot here if you're trump uh he doesn't really have all that many great tools uh, to even really dig that much farther through his deck. He does have the slam, but he's really, you know, he has a lot of combo pieces, but not everything. And uh, 
Certainly not enough to really end the game just yet. The fact that he he, he could theoretically get a uh, a big Emperor Thorson is actually potentially kind of appealing. You know, he has uh, access to everything but a frothing that he'd be looking for to have a, a, a big game-ending turn. Um, but, again, no real way to deal with these huge minions, and if they do get taunted up, even Frothing Berserker is going to have trouble getting through them. Yeah, that's a good point. So it looks like we're going to see Death Spike come down, and uh, Trump is not going to be happy when that gets uh, oozed next turn, I think. Yeah, it's going to be pretty brutal, considering that he was relying on this Death Spike to either clear... Um, or help him to stabilize the board so that way Emperor Thorson gets down better. And this this is the time to ooze for sure. Because oh, yeah. you don't want to let that death bite live any longer than it than your opponent intends on having it. So here, you know, Toyota, I mean Toyota's in a great position here. He can he can ooze that. And if he really wants to, also just taunt up both his guys to even protect his face um, from you know, you know inventor attacks. But I have to wonder whether he actually is is too afraid of getting faced right here. He might he might actually want to just hold on to that Sun Fury. Um, yeah, he he might use the Dark Bomb, clear the two three because of the Whirlwind effect, squeeze in a Life Tap in the very beginning or end, depends on his fancy. Let's see. Ooh, and Defender of Argus, even more taunts, which are going to make it even harder for uh, Trump to get through, particularly given that he is lacking any executes right now. Yeah, he's lacking a lot of stuff. He's got ways to make Frothing Berserker really sick, but that's about it. We do see him, Trump, pick up a uh, Grim Patron, which he can potentially set up a pretty nice hand for uh, for the combo with Emperor Tharson. He unfortunately, again, doesn't have that Frothing Berserker, so he can't really go for the one-turn kill, but he can potentially get... A, uh, a a good discount to set him up for it in the future. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that, considering that patron we saw in the previous game with Surrender versus Strife Crew, I want to say, where he was able to take an early patron win, right? Um, solely just off that damage, and it wasn't even the Frothing Berserker that ended the game. And here we see, you know, just setting up a board full of patrons. Unfortunately for for Trump, Toyota does have that Hellfire waiting, and uh, he doesn't really have, he's not going to really get punished for using it here when Trump doesn't really have much to do with it next turn. It even yeah, allows for the Twilight Drakes to survive. So well, one of them. Yeah, he has to choose his favorites here, unfortunately. Well, my favorite is going to be the one that has enough health to survive. Yeah, well, I, I like that one too. <laughs> it shows more promise and potential, you know. Yeah, I, I believe I, that 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 Twilight Jake reminds me of CLG. It just has so much potential. <laughs> well, that's not a very good sign for Toyota, though. If that's the case, and <laughs> ultimately he's going to be disappointed by the end of this game. Yeah, well, at least by the end of the series. Ha. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I guess in this case you can just drop the Sunder Fury Protector. Seventeen health is still not the most comfortable that you're at. Well, I mean, Trump is at 10, too. Like, the, the Sun Fury Protector actually sets up... He, does, does he set up lethal next turn? With Defender of Argus Dark Bomb? Yeah, so... Trump is going to go ahead and... Looks like he's going to Death Spite this away, dropping to 6. That feels like you have to armor up, right? You can't oh, yeah. just drop Armor Smith. I feel, I feel like, yeah, you have to armor up here. There's, there's a lot of things that kill you. I mean... You have seen a, a Hellfire and a Dark Bomb already, so maybe maybe you're not afraid of dying. Oh, man. Maybe he coins out the, uh, the, the Stable Ghoul, too. Nope. Oh, well, this is... Fortunately for Trump, there is the second Dark Bomb available, and uh, we're going to see Thunder of Argus and Dark Bomb for Exaxes. And uh, Toyota manages to pull out the third game of the series, uh, bring it to two games to one in favor of Trump. Uh, so Trump just needs to pick up a win with his patron warrior deck against Toyda's Hunter or Tempo Mage. Yeah, Tempo Mage might be a little tricky, um, but I think he can do this for sure. Toyda's shown resilience. Where even though he's down 0-2, he's come back in the past. So uh, I have to imagine that he's going to do the same here too. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident for Toyda's chances, even though Trump's up 2-1 right now. 
Yeah, I mean, he, he's uh, he's in a reasonable spot. You know, he does have a pretty... Uh, he has the, the, the sort of mid-range Hunter deck, which I think mm -hmm. is uh, a bit stronger against Patron than the Face Hunter decks, because uh, the Face Hunter decks, so many of the combo pieces of uh, of the Patron decks are useful just as removal against them. Things like Whirlwind are so good against decks full of Leper Gnomes and Worgen Infiltrators and things like that. Um, but it looks like Toyota is starting things off with his Tempo Mage. All right, well... Either way, every deck has to win here. There's no extra bonus points for scoring better in a series compared to what it was in the past. Uh, in the group stages of Vulcan, uh, what we had was a best of three where you know scores did end up mattering if you end up losing the overall series. Mm -hmm. But here, Toyota uh, going for the Tempo Mage, which I guess he feels like maybe has a better chance than the Patron Mage. Um, this isn't really a matchup I've seen a lot of. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's tough to say, I think... Which uh, which of his decks is stronger? At least from my perspective, I, I you know it's, it seems like the Tempo Mage might potentially you know because it has such such reasonable early removal that can deal with you know any of the the stuff coming down uh, in the early turns, along with just Mirror Image. Mirror Image is very good at, at at protecting your minions from dying to weapons. That's probably what it's best at. You know, if your opponent is trying to use Death Spite and Fiery War Axe as their primary removal effects. Uh, mirror image is great there, but it is. Uh, it, and here we're gonna see, I guess, a coin into flame cannon to leave the source of Prentice alone on the board. Yeah, and then that gives him an opportunity to trade effectively, so that way he can use Flame Waker, uh, and then not have to worry about things like Acolyte on board because he can kill it off easily. But mm -hmm. this looks. Very unfortunate for Trump, where he doesn't have a weapon early on. Do you think he slams and removes his Sorcerer's Apprentice one for one? I kind of, I kind of like actually playing uh, either Frothing or Warsong here. I, I actually, I mean, Frothing basically forces him to have. Ooh, that is a that is a good draw. Oh uh, man, Frothing would would force your opponent to have pretty much Fireball or another Flame Cannon here, um, or Frostbolt along with Ping. Whereas Warsong, uh, you have two Warsongs, so you could potentially save. Save your Warsong Commander, um, hmm. or rather, save your Frothing Berserker and, and potentially just sort of sacrifice one of your duplicate Warsongs to possibly just trade in. But here, we're going to see Flame Waker into this, and there are some triggers. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that Toyota probably trades in here. Maybe not. Maybe he just sits behind the. Yeah, it seems seems safest to me. I it imagine it's too risky. Like yeah, that. I imagine it's pretty likely we'll see just slam into execute here. Yep, Trump definitely needs to find ways to get draw going though, um, because he's using up some of his cards, and Tempo Mage will eventually just keep loading up threats, and he's going to be caught in an awkward spot where he has too many combo cards. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, Toy is able to get down a Flame Waker, which is currently protected from any weapon based removal. Um, no Mission Adventure is a great draw for, for Trump. It, it's able to potentially contest the uh, the mirror images on board as well as helping cycle him through his deck, which is really what he's looking for more than anything else. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, our Cannon Select Fishes allows the Flame Waker to potentially clear as well. Uh, that was another another possibly perfect shot if he wants to fire off this Frostbolt to protect his board. It's unclear whether that's worthwhile. Uh, he could also just attack into the Gnomish Inventor and ping uh, to, to keep his, his guy protected, but that does uh, open up Flame Waker to possibly die to Execute or uh, any other two edge effect. Like, those two Whirlwinds, though we'd probably not see those just to clear the board. <laughs> not not by themselves, at least. Uh, maybe even Acolyte was there to help it cycle and some yeah, other... I like this like Frostbolt that. here. Keep the keep the taunts up and get a little bit of damage in with the flame waker trigger. All right. Well, there's only one play for Trump to drop the Emperor Thorson, but even then, the hand he reduces, he's gonna need a little bit more extra help off his deck in order to benefit off the, of it. The thing is, if Trump draw, if Trump draws, ooh wow, another fireball. So, hmm. If Trump draws either, uh, either a Frothing or a uh, 
a Grim Patron. He has the ability to play his uh, War Song into Double Whirlwind, which would be you know pretty a pretty big pretty big play with either of them. Though here, you know, he's, he's not really able to, to do much of anything with that Battle Rage. It's just cycling. Yeah, for two, which no. just stinks. Uh, he could cycle for, He could cycle the Battle Rage and end up getting an additional card if he Whirlwinds. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if he's just going to play Cycle, Whirlwind, Battle Rage just to, to get another card here. That's, this is a rough spot because A, you know, Trump is clearly pretty far behind and uh, does need to dig, but he, he is using... Uh, you know, some of his valuable resources to actually get there. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. He part ways with the second whirlwind so he can clear off the flame waker here. I mean, how does Trump actually win from that position though? If he uses all of these all of these resources to uh to just clear the board. That's a good question. Might have to just let Whirlwind do its thing next turn or next opportunity and then try to go for a win, but then it becomes more difficult with Dr. Boom on board. Well, sort of. It does It does make Frothing Berserker uh, potentially really, really scary with that many minions that are getting hit by Whirlwind. Huh. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I think... It will buff it a lot, but the chances of it dying increase significantly. And then after Dr. Boom point. comes Ragnaros. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like Toyta's spot from this position. Uh, Trump has really struggled in the early game to, to get anything together. And uh, yeah, as we were discussing earlier, the mirror, uh, mirror images are really making it difficult for him to contest anything with these weapons. Hmm. Is there any reservation for Toyota for playing Dr. Boom? I don't really think you're too afraid considering that the Boom bots are still your friends. They'll ultimately help you out. Mm -hmm. And this, this is, I, I kind of like this because this actually clears off, like, clears off a minion uh, on Toyota's side of the table and keeps the Flame Waker out of, of actual, uh, actual Whirlwind range. So now, even if Trump plays, you know, Frothing plus... Uh, uh, War Song plus Whirlwind. It's only getting what plus eight. I wonder. So then the father becomes becomes ten. It's, Assuming it survives it's, the boom. Yeah, bots. exactly. It's only ten power, and then it's yeah, it still needs to survive the boom bots. And Trump is and, again left with yeah. very little to actually uh, close things out. Well, you also forgot to. We also forgot to mention that Doctor Boom is just like still there even right. amidst yeah, all exactly. this. So like. This yeah. is not. This is not like a a play that either closes the game or even puts Trump in a position where he's ahead on the board. Is it a play that you have to make? Do you have any time to stall? Uh, I mean, it, he could theoretically just whirlwind too. Oh, and playing the death bite over the uh, the axe is never happy, but it looks like he may be going for yeah, like trying to get more in play to. Uh, to give, him, yeah. give him a shot next turn. His last hope might be to draw a Grim Patron then, and then go for big board clears with um, Whirlwinds. Uh, could be, could be. I mean, though here, you know, we could see, we could just see that uh, that Ragnaros come down and just everything go to the face. But then 7, it, it, 10, 11, uh, 12, yeah, there's no way to, like, if, if both Boombots hit phase for 8, and Ragnaros hit for 8, is that lethal? Well, the Boombots, unfortunately, are giving extra armor in the process by yeah. attacking into Okay. Oh, it only hit for 1. Bad Boombots. That's too <laughs> bad. Maybe this one hits for 4? Uh, oh. Alright. Eh, 4 total. This puts Trump at seven and facing down a pretty huge board. I'm uh, I'm not not really liking his chances here. Slam. All right. Got kind of helps if he gets execute. Acolyte. That doesn't okay. really do enough. No. Acolyte and Speak to me. whirlwind. This will draw mm. him hard. Attack face. Whirlwind again. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess it does help here. <laughs> yeah, but Still, I, I don't, I don't really see how he's getting out of this though. Yeah, he, especially with the okay. fireball in his hand, there's, there's really no way. So what he needs to do is to cool task Matt. Well, he needs to like draw another card off the acolyte, execute the Doctor Boom, and then hope that Ragnaros hits like cool taskmaster. Yeah, that that I think is his. I don't, I don't know why he attack first with that rather than or play that first doesn't. Just does one more damage to it, but all right. So we're gonna attack here. We get the trigger. Do we see it and execute? Nope. Ew. And that is yeah. That's gonna be the game. So Toyota uh, started off 0 and 2, but is back to 2 and 2 against Trump here. So how it, it is down? I believe to Toyota's uh, uh, Hunter against Trump's Warrior. Uh, I feel yeah. I feel like Toy is just a comeback kid today. Everything he does, he's gonna start zero two and then go back and three two reverse sweep. Yeah, Seems we saw like how it is. We saw the exact same pattern against uh, against Forsen, where uh, Forsen was up two games to zero, but then failed to pick up a win in the last three games, and Toyota advanced to the quarterfinal where we see him here. So uh, yeah, uh, the the Patriot Warrior deck from Trump uh, struggling a little bit there. And it hasn't really found what it needed in any of the games that we've seen it so far. So, uh, this is going to be its third opportunity to pick up a win, and this is probably the best matchup for it uh, of the, uh, the the lineup that that Toyota has with the Hunter. Probably, I think it's still it's too early to say. Thing. Yeah, but I, I just don't want to guarantee anything, you know. Just one of those things. Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that being a good matchup means he'll win. I'm just saying probably what he's hoping for. But uh, all right, yeah, right, yeah of course. This, this hand has some of what Trump's definitely looking for with uh, the Acolyte of Pain, Whirlwind, uh, Grim Patron Slam. So he has some tools to potentially try to stay alive, along with some tools to draw some cards, which is uh, pretty important to dig through and find what he needs. All right. Well, right. Toyota has his knife jugglers. I think that's the best way to go about it. If you go for Haunted Creeper, you're asking to get punished by, like, Acolytes, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think this is the strongest disincentive. Plus, you you get to feel how your opponent's opening hand is. And in this case, Trump doesn't have a weapon, so he's just got Slam. Yeah, so Slam takes down the uh, Knife Juggler, which otherwise, you know, could have gotten a lot of damage in. Now, it looks like Toyota's going with Creeper rather than the Knife Juggler because he wants to set up Houndmaster next turn. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Trump's going to put Acolyte and going to get summarily punished by that Houndmaster. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty significant moment, too, because shutting down the Acolyte with just one draw while building your board is really high impact to pressure the warrior out of the game and deny them from having too many resources here. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal in multiple, multiple perspectives because the Acolytes are very key to find all the combo tools that the uh, the warrior deck needs as well as just establishing you know a lot of pressure here so yeah we're gonna see a slam into execute wall well win to clear the board i think which is you know which is good for trump in, in the sense that he's no longer under a lot of pressure but at the same time he had to use a lot of his resources that he'd much rather use to actually try and combo off okay Knife juggler here to just try to build up the board again. Set up the safest possible board for high main. Mm -hmm. and that's, yeah, that's what the the hunter deck wants to you know get to the point where it is able to get these big minions down. Ooh, and that's actually a mm. reasonable pickup for Trump here. Right now, uh, Toyota's hand or Toyota's board does not contest the emperor well, so he theoretically could coin out the emperor and then. He has a 50% chance of, of, if his opponent plays one minion, having it get uh, killed by Juggler and his board. Right. So, yep. But if he doesn't, then it's actually potentially really good for Trump because he could even get not just not just the discount on this hand, but potentially, uh, potentially even more cards as well. <clears throat> if it forces a reaction like Kill Command, it makes the turn for a high main normally dropped much weaker. So Kill Command is a guaranteed snipe onto this Emperor Thorson. But now he doesn't develop the Jaime. So this is something that disrupted the turn of Toyota a lot. And I wonder, because last turn, Toyota actually played the Web Spinner and uh, Hero Powered rather than playing Bow. And if he had played Bow, he could have been guaranteed to actually remove the Emperor and be able to 
the Valpyme in that turn. So I wonder, I wonder if true, uh, true, true. that may have kind of, uh, kind of uh, come back and cost him a little bit there. So we see the an Armor Smith come down. And this is actually pretty key. Armor Smith is a card that, that helps a lot in keeping the the hand lock that or rather the hand lock. It plays out similarly sometimes. The patron deck alive. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ragnaros is actually a big pickup from Toyota here as another big yeah. game that can really uh, potentially make things pretty difficult for Trump. Lots of lots of pressure from lots of big guys here. I mean, these are the three heaviest hitting cards. Uh, I don't really think that he has anything more expensive than this. I know a couple of hunters were experimenting with Deathwing as well, but uh, that was a long time ago, and I don't think anyone's really put that commonly cycled in. It was pretty epic, though, when you could see a hunter play Deathwing. <laughs> Deathwing is certainly an epic card. Yeah. All right, so... Oh, yeah. It's a legendary, actually. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Boom presenting the threat. I don't think Trump's running big game hunter, so he's just gonna have to go through it manually or ignore it. That that inner rage is potentially a really big deal. It allows Trump to now uh, play the patron, inner rage it, yes. attack, and then get get not only more patrons, but a, a much bigger battle range. Right. Assuming it hits one of those uh, boom bots, and those yep. patrons end up getting multiplied even more. Yeah, those boom bots could. Uh, could make things go really wrong, but if they do, it can also make things go really, really right for Trump. If they hit one of the undamaged patrons, it takes out one of them. So it actually, that's actually a big deal because it cuts off one of one of Trump's card draws. Oh god, ah, that's cool. That that's is a card huge too. draw for Trump there. Not only does it currently stop seven damage, but it threatens to actually spawn three more patrons when it dies. Mm. And now it's just back and forth. Like I don't even know. What is guaranteed anymore? Hunter looked like maybe he could have just continued to curve out in pressure, but Toy is in a really awkward spot now. Yeah, and those those big minions that we were talking about potentially taking over the game, they are you know just able to run into a taunt at this point. The 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 fact that the uh, the unstable ghoul not only is, is is keeping the big minion at bay, but but even even killing him is a huge liability. Like, I don't I don't really know what Toyota has. Like I think that Ragnaros Go is his best play. It looks like what he's picking up on. This at least means. All right, oh, he got wait. one of them. Is that lethal? Oh god! No, he can't, well he can't play. I, I'm not sure. Hmm. He can play Warsong plus Frothing. Uh, attack the. Uh, the ghoul to something that does how much damage? So it does There's two plus the six minions in play, seven, and will spawn seven. two patrons. So it's plus six plus six. It's plus twelve to what's in board right now. I think so. There's it's twenty something. I think it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's quite lethal. Yeah, I think he's short by a few damages. He's That's got 22. 22. Yeah, it's 22. So, hmm. it's kind of an interesting spot. But he's got Gromosh, so he can do four damage to his face. I mean, the, the scary thing is, though, yeah, he can Gromosh, but at the same time, you know, his opponent has Ragnaros and Dr. Boom, and he's also playing Hunter. Right, so what if he just goes for a coin flip to kill you? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. Well... He's going right, to be well. at 22 health himself. His opponent can do what he sees, maybe 15 to the face. Unleash! That's a lot. That's a lot of damage. It's five, it's five more damage. damage. And then he has kill command and hero power. So that's 17, 18, 19. He, ha he still has to... Uh, ooh, but Animal Companion might possibly with get a Leoc if he attacks with... Uh, hmm. This is, <laughs> is kind of interesting. He doesn't have kill command. He has. Oh, I thought he had kill command. For some reason, I was thinking that right, Iron right, for right. Grizzly. I was looking at and seeing kill command. So no kill command. So no kill command. Animal companion might generate more damage to play within range, but I yeah, think his best Leoc chance here. might be just oh, to go for it. <gasps> it's Leoc. Leoc. It is. Okay, so he has. He gets four guys. There's eight plus uh, eight, sixteen. Yeah, he still needs to hit face with Ragnaros to win. Do you, I, I mean, there's no way he can play the board control game at all, right? Because he just dies. Oh no, he's dead to he's dead to 
you know, everything. Yeah. He can't possibly try it. You can't kill a, a board of patrons with Unleashed. It's just not going to work. But he, he improves his chances, though, by removing on the board. He does. Yep. So I he's mean, got a one, a one in five. five. Yep. To and move on. Die insect? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no way. The Grim Patron Boy, shields it, Trump. Nice. Sigh of relief. That would have been heartbreaking to say the least, that based that off the way. Right right like, <laughs> yeah, and then you have someone calculating the actual odds of like being 0.56 percent or something like that repeated. Would have been nuts. Well, exciting series, and uh, we're done with our fourth of the day, which means we have one more. Trump moves on to the semifinals up against Surrender. Uh, Toyota's run does end here in the quarterfinal, but a, a job well done. That was a really fun game um, set of games, as well as the fact that Toyota came from the qualifier spot. Uh, he did manage to beat you know, pretty good players coming here, being forced in, beating yourself, Kibler, um, but ultimately it was just coming up short here. Yeah, no, I mean, it was a great run. Uh, you know, those were some great games. Toyota coming back from uh, nearly being eliminated in, uh, in three straight, but uh, taking it to the deciding fifth game. Uh, and it was an epic one. One. So uh, definitely excited to see more of him in the future and more of Trump in our next match. Sounds good. We have one more match, guys, before we wrap up today. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a second.